What's going on you guys? Riley here. Today we've got a video that might stir up some interesting comments in the comments section. Today we are taking a look at the 2019 Camaro SS with the newly revised facelift. Uh, so it's not only just the new front bumper, new rear bumper and taillights. There's actually some updates um, to the performance of the car and also the interior. So we'll get into all of those. And I really wanted to compare this car today to the new Mustang and see really how they stack up against each other. So before we start the review, I wanted to give a little backstory. So I have owned a 6th gen Camaro and I also currently own a 2018 Mustang. So I would say I'm a pretty good person to talk to if you're deciding between the two cars and I'll try to make this review as fair as possible for both sides. So among many changes to the Camaro lineup for 2019, they also added a few new colors, this being one of them called Satin Steel Gray Metallic. And it looks really good in person, I really like it. Uh, there's also a few other ones. but. Uh, starting off with the front end, I don't really know what to think about it. I don't think it looks bad, but I don't think it looks too great either. And I really wish they changed the placement of the Chevy badge and put it right up there. I think that would look a whole lot better and there's rumors going around that Chevy may in fact do that later on. But that is the newly revised facelift and I will say, when this car was first released, it got a lot of hate and a lot of critics were going after this thing and they were being pretty harsh on it. Um, I do think it has grown on me over time and I do think that it can look good um, if spec the right way. This one's not too bad and also the 1LE Camaros uh, for this, the 2019 and up, they actually look pretty good uh, too. You're going to notice a lot of minor differences throughout the review such as, oh look, there's a new hood vent. Uh, not a huge change, but just something to notice. This is a new wheel option for 2019. You still have the Brembos and the Goodyear Eagle F1 tires. Um, so all that stuff remains the same. And then moving on to the rear, also once again kind of controversial if you like it or not. I will say I think I like the rear better than the front. The taillights at first I wasn't a fan of them. Once again they've kind of grown on me. And then also something that's new for 2019. So everybody's used to having a uh, backup camera right there, big whoop. But you also get a camera right here. And I'll show you what that little guy's for in a little bit. But just take a mental note of that, uh, that camera added in the spoiler. And uh, yeah, just pretty much, you know, still, you know, the same old 6th gen, just a couple minor changes here and there, and uh, eh, still looks pretty good. I personally think the 2016 through 2018s look a little bit better than these. I think that's, those are actually uh, some of the best looking cars on the road. Now moving on to the good stuff, the motor and the transmission options. So we still have the same 6.2 liter V8, 455 horsepower, 455 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60s are still in the high three second range. Quarter mile is right around 12 seconds flat, give or take. This and the new Mustangs are pretty much on equal playing fields with the Mustang being at 460 horsepower, but a little bit down on torque. So they are very similar and they're kind of like, you know, straight up apples to apples. Um, but I absolutely love this engine. And then new for 2019, we are now dealing with a 10 speed automatic. So this is the same 10 speed automatic from the ZL1 Camaro and the same 10 speed automatic from the, uh, the new Mustangs. Now I'll show you guys the window sticker here in a second, but this is a 2SS and it pretty much has every option except it is missing a sunroof, but it's got the magnetic ride control, the Recaro seats, the dual mode exhaust, I mean all the little things it's got. Uh, the 2SS also gives you all the fancy stuff like all the color changing lighting throughout the car, um, a heads up display and just all the random doodads that you'd probably want to have but you're on the fence about paying for. But let us now take a look at this window sticker together. So first thing that stands out to me is 27 miles per gallon highway. That's pretty incredible. And an average of 20 in a, you know, a V8 muscle car. That's really, really incredible. Next thing that stands out to me is the total vehicle price, which is right there of $49,000. Now, like I said, this one has a lot of options and it is a 2SS. So this is about as optioned as you'll get. All of the options I briefly mentioned are located right over there for about $6,000 in options on top of all the options that already come with a 2SS like the heads up display, the Bose sound system, uh, the lighting and all that fun stuff. So that's a quick overview of the window sticker. Something else I just noticed is the smog rating is a one. The back seats are unchanged. There is still basically no room back there. Don't plan on putting anybody back there. They will hate their life. Um, but let's go ahead and fire this thing up and I'll show you some of the new changes to all of like the infotainment system and uh, that little secret camera I talked about earlier. Yeah. 
So those of you familiar with Camaros may notice it looks a little bit different. They kind of changed some fonts and the gauges at the top look a little bit different than they used to. Uh, they also changed this screen right here. Just a little bit different, kind of updated things, but it's pretty much the same. The center screen is all new for 2019. Chevy updated all of their systems across their whole fleet of vehicles. Um, so I think personally this looks a lot better. It's more eye-pleasing, um, simple to use, and just kind of looks, you know, more modern. It does just about everything you would need it to do. You know, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you can swipe it and I guess pair a uh, radio station over here and you can have your phone stuff over here and then swipe over and you can climate control OnStar. Ambient lighting, there are a few new things new uh, as far as I know. So I selected this color where it's green and red and it actually, I'll have to show you a picture. You can actually mix colors now, which I thought was very interesting. So on the doors, as you see, it's like a, a multicolor thing. So kind of cool, just a couple new options there. So like I said, just a bunch of small changes. All of this pretty much looks the same. You know, the 10-speed automatic looks the same here as the 8-speed did, and you still got your mode selector here. Um, but now let's talk about that secret camera. So where would that be? Hmm, don't know. How about up here on the rear view mirror? So right now you got a normal mirror. It's just, you know, a mirror. But you flip this little switch, and now you have like an HD camera where you basically get a live feed of whatever's going on behind you and it's like super crystal clear. I mean, this is just, this blew my mind when I saw it for the first time and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the future. Also, as mentioned, the heads-up display is in here since it is a 2SS. Um, but I believe those are pretty much all of the main things. Uh, Bose sound system sounds really good in here. And everything else is pretty much unchanged from the old Camaro, which everybody is very familiar with. Um, so now I guess there's one thing left to do, and let's go take this thing on a drive, and let's talk about some of the differences uh, between this and the Mustang, and which one you should buy. All right, so let's go ahead and start her up and take her for a drive. Still sounds good. Got that going for us. So before we get really started with this driving portion, I wanted to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to Parkway Chevrolet in Tomball, Texas. If you need a new Chevy or a used car, whatever the case may be, ask for David Croft, he'll take care of you. Uh, but I really appreciate them letting me drive this car for the afternoon and giving you guys some feedback. Okay, so first up, I think we should probably talk about the biggest change and that would be adding the 10-speed automatic to this car. So I've driven the eight-speed a couple times, uh, obviously owned a six-speed manual car, and I've driven lots of 10-speed uh, Mustangs. So, do I think it was necessary? No, not really. Uh, my reason being, you'll hear after we uh, leave this stop sign, it just doesn't give you the same satisfaction to listen to. And I will just shut up and I will, I will just let you listen. you get better gas mileage I know you, it's faster I, I could get all of that but the sound to me it just it's weird but if you sit here and if you get on it <laughs> traction control is kicking in oh man the exhaust sounds so good okay they didn't pop and crackle that much on the previous six gens that was really nice what they change I swear to you, this exhaust sounds different than they used to. I... <laughs> Listen to that! That sounds awesome! Now, I'm very, f very familiar with the 6th gen platform, and I've never heard them do that. Oh, that's quick. I swear something is different with this exhaust. I don't know what it is, but it is different. I think it's a little bit louder and the pops and crackles, that's just on a next, that's on a totally different level. I wonder if I can make it do it on command if I sit here and drop to like third gear and just get on. Oh, I can do it. <laughs> ah, I want one of these, that's dope. I'd get like five miles per gallon if I owned one of these because I'd be doing that all the time listening to that. That's awesome. Okay, so maybe I'll forgive the transmission. Yeah, just leave it in paddle shifter mode. You're fine. It's super quick to shift. I, 
I will say that. And I think I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this since I do own a Mustang, but I feel like this transmission is better in the Camaro than it actually is, the 10 speed is in the Mustang. I don't know if it's the way this engine is set up and the way the, like, the lower, lower end torque is in this car as compared to the 5.0. Honestly, I think the eight speed automatic in this car previously was just fine. I don't think they really needed to switch to the 10 speed, but now that it's here, I really won't complain. I think it's, it's actually pretty nice. And going into a quarter of a speed, the Alpha chassis is just so flat. It handles so well, so responsive. It's such good driver feel. Man, GM, you guys know how to make a car. Good on you. If we could just figure out a way to make the front bumper look a little bit better, other than that, this car is almost perfect. I, like, I, I, I keep saying that because I keep driving a lot of cool cars, dang it. But this is really nice. So that's just kind of touching on some of the new additions to the 2019 Camaro. Now let's talk about more Mustang versus Camaro and uh, kind of some, some of my personal thoughts on that. So before I started this review, I went to Ford's website and I did a build your own Mustang customization thing. And I spec'd one exactly like this car is spec'd, but in Mustang form, of course. Uh, so adding magnetic ride control, the upgraded sound system, since this one has Bose and just pretty much everything, the 10 speed. The price of that car ended up being $53,000. As I said, this one is 49,000. So the Mustang actually ended up being more, which I thought was weird. But basically what I gathered from doing that is that really the prices of the cars are almost about the same. I mean, it obviously depends on what kind of dealer rebates are going on and um, stuff like that. But if you just look at MSRP, they're almost like spot on with each other. Honestly, I think the quality of both cars is kind of about the same. I mean, they're both mass produced muscle cars. Um, I don't think one of them really stands out as being so much better than the other. And realistically, both are great cars. Both kind of have their purpose. I think this is a better sports car, and this is the car I would rather have if I was going to the track more often and um, doing more sporty driving. I think the Mustang I would rather have if I was doing more daily driving, and the back seats are somewhat usable in the Mustang. This thing, they don't put somebody back there please I think the Mustang's a little bit more comfortable but like I said this is more of the race car to me of the bunch the trunk in this thing is pretty darn small the trunk in the Mustang's pretty usable um, so like I said if you had to pick just one to live with as your only car I would say the Mustang is probably a slightly better option for most people but if you're that special person that likes you know a, a performance car likes going fast and you can kind of live with some of the downfalls of this car I think that this is probably a better fun car I mean ultimately the choice is up to you guys which one you prefer if you're a Ford guy of course you're gonna like the Mustang and vice versa um, but really both cars are, are absolutely fantastic and so much better than they used to be um, both are like proper you know sports cars and, and they can hang up there with stuff that is a lot more expensive but I am absolutely blown away with A, how many gears this thing has, and B, just how amazing it sounds. <laughs> Dude, that is just unreal. I'm gonna be honest here, guys. I think at the end of the day, the car that makes me happier while driving is probably the Camaro, which is weird to say, because I drive a Mustang, but, uh, I mean, that's just, that's just being straight up, being honest with you guys. Realistically, I like living with the Mustang a little bit more just cause it's a, like I said, a little bit better of a daily, but I mean, you can totally daily one of these things. I dailyed a one LE version of this car, which is the track focused version for like, what, seven or eight months. And I mean, I had no issues with it. Um, the seats are, they're comfortable, but there's some better options out there if you're looking for comfort. Also, it's pretty small in here. The back seats aren't really usable. The trunk is pretty small. Um, the visibility is worse in here. So like I said, they both have pros and cons. It's what are you looking for? If you're looking for fun and you don't care about the other stuff, probably go with the Camaro. So what have we learned today here, boys and girls? Well, we learned that the 2019 Camaro, even though it may not look like it, it is a ton of fun. Uh, I really wish they wouldn't have changed the front end and just left it the same as it was and then just added, you know, the 10 speed and all the little doodads in here. I think that would have been perfect. But now we have to live with the front end, which is okay. 
But aside from the styling, that may raise a few questions. Everything else on this car is great. Most noticeably, the wonderful exhaust. Um, but I, I am seriously very impressed with the 2019 Camaro, just as I was with the 2016 through 18s. These things are fantastic cars for the money. If you're looking at something and maybe comparing it with something European that's a lot more expensive, this will give you just as much fun for like half the price. So definitely a good option to consider. Once again, be sure to hit up Parkway Chevrolet if you guys need a new Chevy and you're in the Houston area. But for now, I think that pretty much sums everything up and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So thank you guys for watching the video. I'll see you all in the next one. Take it easy.